Hello! In this video we are going to calculate the partition function for yet another type of model system, a harmonic oscillator. In this video we are going to assume that the system is classical. If we were doing this in reality and using a harmonic oscillator to model a chemical bond, we should really use a quantum mechanical treatment. The classical result is nevertheless interesting, which is why I would like to work through the derivation here. With that in mind, let's begin. We are going to consider motion in 1D and we will thus have a Hamiltonian that looks like this. The simplest thing that we can do with the potential term, V of x in this expression, is to set it equal to zero. We have done this already, however, and we have seen how we can derive the ideal gas equation from a partition function that has, from a Hamiltonian that has V of x equal to zero. The next thing to try is to make V of x a quadratic, as shown here. When we are doing so, we are, we are assuming that there will be an oscillatory motion around the minimum in the potential. In other words, the system is going to fluctuate around a minimum in the potential energy. The Hamiltonian that we get when V of x is a positive quadratic is the Hamiltonian for a harmonic oscillator. This Hamiltonian is shown here. We can insert the Hamiltonian we just arrived at into our now hopefully familiar expression for the canonical partition function, as shown here. We must integrate over the two degrees of freedom, the position and momentum coordinates, when calculating this partition function. This is straightforward, however, as classical Hamiltonians are separable, and we can thus do our normal trick of writing the exponential of, of the sum as a product of two exponentials. We can then write the 2d integral as a product of two 1d integrals, as shown here. We next note that the integrands in our two integrals are familiar. We have seen this integral over all space of e to the minus ax squared over 2 when we did our derivations of the ideal gas. We thus know that this is a standard integral that we can look up in tables of integrals. We can thus easily compute the two integrals and arrive at the result shown here. Gathering terms then brings us to the final result for the partition function that is shown here. Easy. Having derived an expression for the partition function, let's find out what we can about the behaviour of this system. We can derive an expression for the average energy of the system using the familiar derivative that is shown on the screen here. When we insert the expression that we've just derived by the partition function into this equation, we find that we have to compute the following straightforward derivative. This derivative is just 1 over beta. Remembering that beta is 1 over kVt, we thus find that the average energy of the harmonic oscillator is kVt. This result is in accordance with the prediction of classical equipartition. Remember that this theorem tells us that each quadratic term in the Hamiltonian, each degree of freedom, contributes half kVt to the average energy of the system. There are two quadratic terms in the Hamiltonian for harmonic oscillator, so equipartition predicts that the average energy is thus kVt, as we have just derived. If we have the average energy as a function of temperature, we can also derive an expression for the heat capacity of the system, as the heat capacity is just the derivative of the average energy with respect to temperature. The heat capacity for a harmonic oscillator is thus equal to Boltzmann's constant. Let's take a moment to consider the results that we have just derived. If we have a 1D harmonic oscillator, the average energy increases linearly with temperature, as shown here. Furthermore, the gradient of this energy graph is constant and is equal to the heat capacity of the system, which is Boltzmann's constant, as shown here. Let's finish by supposing we have n harmonic oscillators. The Hamiltonian of such a system would be as shown here. In practice, the oscillators might have different masses and spring constants. The key point I want to note, however, is that the Hamiltonian is a sum. 
When we insert this Hamiltonian into our partition function, we can thus do our usual trick of writing the exponential of the sum as a product of exponentials. Furthermore, we find that each of the exponentials in our products depends on only one of the degrees of freedom that we are integrating over. We can thus separate out all of the integrals and write the 2n dimensional integral as a product of 2n one dimensional integrals. The partition function for the n oscillators is thus simply the partition function for a single oscillator that we have just derived raised to the power n. By a similar token, the average energy of the n oscillators is n kVt and the heat capacity is n kB. Pretty neat, huh? Thanks for your attention.